Hello, dear ones. Welcome to Touch by the Lord, a program that will build your faith, hope, and trust in the Lord. We are so grateful to God for our lives. If you have not taken a minute to thank the Lord, please do so for your life. What do you tell God each and every day when you have strength to go about your normal duties? Appreciate him all the time for your life, for your strength, and for what he's giving you to do. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, TBL TV. Like, comment, and share. You will never be the same. Like our Facebook and Instagram pages, CBL TV. Like, comment, and share. You will not be the same. Let's take our thoughts for today. Each passing day is a reminder for us to live the best of our lives in the Lord so we will not be disappointed at the end of time. This is so simple to know. As you go about your normal duties, have a relationship with God and make sure you are pleasing him with your life so that at the end of your time, you will spend eternity with him. Today, we are blessed to have a man of God all the way from Lagos, Nigeria, to share his life story to bless us. His name is Pastor Wanchuku Festus Edobo. Wanchuku means the Son of God. He is the pastor from His Glory Cloud Church of Christ, Lagos, Nigeria. This great man of God used to be an international model before he had a call into ministry. He is also an author of five books. Hello, Pastor. Hello, Reverend. I thank God so much for life. When Pastor Clement told me that he has a wonderful man of God in Lagos to share his life story, to bless our program, I was so excited that we met. And today we are here to hear a wonderful story that will bless our many viewers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, we we'll give God the glory and we thank God for the gift of life and for the mercy Amen. of election that He has yes. um, placed upon our lives. Yes. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. God for your life. Reverend, please, can you share your childhood with us before we can proceed? All right. Um, I was born actually in a village somewhere in Edo State. Um, and of course, my dad was actually a pastor. However, a pastor of one of these um, white garden churches, I think it was Cherubin. Wow. Yeah. E. Yeah, he pastored Cherubin and Seraphim. And um, I grew up in that church. And eventually, he became. A region, the, father, the brother who was the king died and they needed him to become the next. So that became wow. a conflict of interest, yes. And um, so when he became the region, so the church he was pastoring actually died and um, mm. stopped functioning and he became a regent until he died. So yeah, um, I grew up in such an environment until we had to migrate at the death of my father and my mom mm. later on to Lagos. And of course, we, I grew up in the Catholic church in Lagos. My sister that I lived with um, attended the Catholic church at the time. So I joined the Catholic church and was very committed. So you went back to the yes. Catholic church? To the Catholic church, yes. Okay. So I, I started living with my sister. And um, amazingly, I was so committed in the Catholic church that I went to church six days a week. Six days 
six wow. days of each week in fact as a matter of fact i fasted each of those six days because i belong to different departments in the catholic church the you the youth the charismatics and all of that and each day we had a meeting there was a fasting so i was fasting yeah. for about six times a week so um fast forward to, to rounding up school and then i decided to be to get into the modeling world so i yeah. started um commercial modeling um here in lagos so i was doing yeah. some commercials and did some commercials with some um, organizations and then of course i thought okay fine i i had that you know modeling was a big business in south africa were you still going to church when you were modeling Yes, I was still going to church. I was still going to the Catholic church. As a, as a matter of fact, I think I was uh, at the time, I was um, the the leader of the the youth arm of the very Catholic church that I worshipped in at that time. The Sion, they, they call them the Sion, the Catholic Youth Organization of Nigeria. So I was the president for I think about the the one ten or three years or thereabout. So it was out of there. I in fact first. I think I, I, I traveled to Ghana for a while. Mm. I traveled to Ghana for a while. I was in Ghana for a couple of months, and then before I eventually moved to South Africa. But it was um, while I was modeling in South Africa, I have always known that I needed to be spiritual, even though I was doing modeling. So um, the Catholic Church, I I managed to attend in Ghana. Rev, when you said you moved to Ghana. Briefly yeah. before you went, did you come to work? No, I just I had a few friends, a few people in Ghana, so I was just trying out, you know, a place I could, you know, be and find a bearing for myself. So, but when I got into Ghana, it wasn't, um, it didn't offer me the kind of opportunities I needed, so I had to come okay. back and then now move to South Africa. During your career, before you moved to South Africa. Yeah. Were you engaged in anything? Because I learned some of these um, jobs expose you to many negative things. Mm -hmm. um, Were you exposed in some of them? Yeah, for some reasons, um, I particularly have not been driven to um, much negativity in terms of um, alcohol, drugs, and all of that. I think the only bad thing I've done in my life was to have a girlfriend and stuff like that. So I think that's mm. the highest that I've done as in terms of going on the wrong lane. All right, mm. because uh, for some reason, not because somebody, someone talked me out of it or someone um, kind of, you know, spoke to me. There was just no um, reason to explain why I was not, you know, moved into all of these negative lives, clubbing, doing all of that things, those things. Um, I would just say it was just the hand of God and the mercy of God upon my life, mm. all right? So I never got involved in all of those um, kinds of life, you know? Okay. So up until the time I got into South Africa, and um, mm -hmm. of course I saw, I saw all of these things. In fact, it was in South Africa for the first time, I knew that there was anything called gay, because where I'm coming from, we didn't have much of that. And wow. yeah, we had many of them coming to me, asking me out. Uh, at the time, I saw a guy being nice to me. I thought it was the figure of wow. God. You know, mm. I said at the time, this guy was dressing most TV presenters. So I thought, okay, fine, what is an opportunity for me? Only for me to find out later that he was a gay. I'm like, what's mm. wrong with you? <laughs> you know, and he found it strange that I didn't know what, you know, what gay, being a gay was, and, you know. That was it. So um, while in South Africa... I, Let's yeah. dwell a bit there. Mm. You know that some of the professions that people choose exposes yeah. them to some of these things. They the think, profession yeah. you were in yeah. was one of those. Yeah. How did you survive mm. not being a victim? Mm. Um, because it's not that you were a very good Christian. Christian, yeah. Yeah. From your background, yeah. 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 Um, to, to really answer that, I would just say it was just the mercy of God. Because mm. I, I tell you the truth, I, I never had any positive influence around me. When I got to mm. South Africa, it, the Nigerians, the people I had around me were all doing the wrong things. Some were doing drugs, mm. some were doing, all, were all doing the wrong things. All right. So 
And for me not to be engrossed into all of this, I can only say it was just the hand of God in my life. I didn't know what I was doing. In fact, before I left Nigeria for South Africa, right, I used to be what I call occasional drinker because um, in Catholic Church, I think that was where I had my first alcohol because um, during harvest, they would have alcohol freely, you know, either sold or distributed. And I, t- I used yeah. to remember when myself and a few of my friends would take probably four or five of us, we share a bottle because we are all you know, youth, so they wouldn't give us much. And that was where I tasted alcohol for the first time in my life. And then, of course, I would take this drink maybe once in a while when there's an occasion, not because, uh, not that I would just wake up one day and said I want to drink. But you see, when I got into South Africa, somehow mm. something in me said to me, you don't, you can't taste alcohol in this place because mm. the people you are around, most of them are doing the wrong things. So they don't plant drugs on you when you are drunk and you do not know. So you have to get mm. away from being alcohol because half a bottle will get me tipsy, mm. right? So I had to say to myself, no to this thing, you know, right there in South Africa. So how were you to... able mm. to say no? Because people are watching us. Yeah. They are in the midst of bad friends. Right. How will they say no to the negative mm. things that their friends are involved in? Yeah. Can you address it, anybody watching yes. us and is yes. going through think, pressure? Yeah, good. In my case, in my case, I would say it was just the sheer hand of God. Why? I think one of the reasons for my help with such really alcohol was the fact that um, I, I have an elder brother who one day um, had come into the house after I was, I was asleep. But I was awoken by a very foul smell in the house, only for me to wake up and realize that my brother had vomited in the house beside the bed. Apparently, he had gone to drink and became drunk and then came to the house and then vomited and everywhere was messed up. And amazingly, I had to do the cleanup. And so the mm-hmm. smell of this thing was very irritating. And I, I made up my mind at that point that this was not going to be the route that I would tow in life. But this is very okay, disgusting. So yeah. that helped you. That helped me. That was the So what are you going to tell someone who is mm. having that pressure from the company that they are in? Now, um, the first thing that I have seen in life with me is this. Look at the future of those who are doing what you're doing now. Mm. That is those who have done that thing into their 60s, into their 70s, into their 50s. Look where they are mm. and check if that is the future you want for yourself. Yeah. Now, if that is not the future you want for yourself, you've got to change it now. Mm. And to change it, change your association. Yeah. Change your association. Yeah. So that's basically one of the things that have helped me as a person. Thank you. Let's mm. continue. Thank you, yeah. Yes. And so, while there, um, I realized that the Catholic church that I was in wasn't offering enough spiritual strength like I would because I realized I needed more. So I had to join um, there was the Pentecostal church that came in at that time I joined. Um, when I saw the light in South Africa, I said to them, to the people around me, I would be in South Africa for one year. And um, some of them felt it was because I wasn't making enough money at the time. But, um, and I just said it, and that was just it, because everybody was smoking. And, like, literally everybody was smoking. And they said because the place was, was cold and you had to smoke. I'm like, no, I don't believe in this thing. Um, fast forward, the guy I was staying with, obviously he had a little issue, had whatever with me. And he hit my head with a pressing iron, and I began to bleed. Wow. Yes. And what said, did you do that. wrong? I mean, it was just a little argument. He had, he, in fact, I wasn't involved in the argument. He had an argument with another person over money. And he expected me that I should step in and clarify the difference. I'm like, how 
do what how do you expect me to come in and clarify the difference? I'm not part of your transaction or your, your menu. And so he felt because I knew the other guy, that the guy was friendly with me, that I was taking sides. And I was like, how does this concern? And out of anger, he just picked up a pressing iron and hit my head. And I'm like, was this concerning me? Well, as a result of that wound, I decided to come home for a break, to just visit Nigeria and just you know, clear out of my mind. Because I was living with this guy. I didn't have a house. My dear, I didn't know what was happening. It was when they stamped my, my passport on arrival, I saw the date of my departure to South Africa. Actually, I had departed Nigeria um, on the 7th of February, 2006. And when they stamped me in, when they stamped me in, I saw the date, it was 7th of February, 2007. 7th of February 2007. I had stamped out 6th of February 2006. Exactly one year was the day I stepped my foot back into the country. Was your modeling business profitable? Yes, it was to, to, to an extent. I, I had a bit of deals in South Africa. It was okay. Of course, not as much as I wanted, but it was okay. I was doing, you know, well, you know, by the help of God um, in the place. But of course, I also still realized that to get as deeper as I wanted to go into the system, you have to get involved in all of these destructive social Which lives. couldn't help you, yeah. Which couldn't help me, and which as yeah. a person was just against my person. Well, we are going on a quick break. Viewers. All right. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Welcome back. You have been listening to the testimony of our dear Pastor Festus. What do you have to share to bless someone out there? Please take our numbers on the screen. Call us and we'll give you that opportunity to share live on set. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, TBL TV. Like, comment, and share. You will not be the same. Hello, Rev. Before we went on a break, we we're talking about your trip from South Africa to Lagos back. Yes, when I go back to Lagos, um, fast forward to the calling right now. And um, of course, I have to look for the next thing to do, which was um, I decided to move to the U.S. So well, I began the journey to the U.S. But I realized again that... <laughs> and the journey that, to the U.S. <laughs> yes. So, so I realized again that um, U.S. is a very uh, high, a place of high moral decadence. But if I go to the U.S. the way I was, that um, I may lose my small Christianity that was growing, all right? So Is that what you told to, yourself? That, that was what I told myself. Wow. Yes. So I decided to enroll in a Bible training program so I could deepen myself in Christianity and in my spirituality so I can be firm to stand whatever may come my way. So I enrolled... Rev, was... your transition from yes. your daddy's church yes. to the Catholic church... Catholic church, yes. And to your presence going into the Bible school. At what point did you totally accept Jesus and gave your life to him? At that point, into Bible school. Okay. Um, I think my first encounter with, with real salvation was still in the Catholic mm. church, actually was still in the Catholic Church. My hunger began to burn because um, mm. the Catholic mm. here in Nigeria has a group called the Charismatic Renewal. The Catholic mm. Charismatic mm. Renewal is a Holy Ghost movement. So I mm. actually joined mm. them while I was in Nigeria. And oh. joining them, oh, okay. we, yes, we used to have things like desert days. Desert days means that we will leave the city and we'll go into the bush and pray for two, three days. 
you yeah. know, mm. before we returned back. So that began to kind of find my, my passion and my hunger for the things of God, you know. And, you know, the Catholic Church actually has a kind of ground that makes you, you know, live the little social life you want to live and still live your spiritual life, all right? So um, that allowed me to stay in the modeling as much as I wanted. But of course, the zeal for the Lord was already in me. In fact, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost in the Catholic Church. My first encounter with the Holy Spirit was in the Catholic Church because then um, in this same charismatic, we had something that was called Life in the Spirit Seminar. And I think it was about, um, I think, 21 days fasting and prayer with a book guide. And so that was when I encountered the Holy Spirit and the longing for the Holy Spirit. But right there and then, I knew I would not stay in the Catholic Church for long. Was I now believe it. How did yes. you know that? See, well, that is thing. what you had known all the while. No, this is the thing. There's, um, there's always this presence, all right, within me that speaks to me. And I strongly believe that's the Holy Spirit. Now, I was able to look into the Catholic Church. I realized I love the Holy Ghost. And who can say anything to me at any time? And whom I would like to obey. But because of the structure of the Catholic Church, I can't directly obey the Holy Spirit in whatever instruction it tells me to do, either in anything at all. Because Catholic has a structure that you have to get to either the bishop or, you know, you know the hierarchy or the, the, the chain of command in that system. You can just say, the Holy Spirit tells me to do this, and then you are able to do it. All right. So, uh, and I wasn't thinking much to it, but I just knew that that was my, the reason why I need, I knew that I would need the Catholic Church. Okay. Fast forward to the time where. Um, I was thinking that, okay, fine, let me go to U.S. Now I can be in U.S., I can work. Um, even if it's not modeling, I can still work and earn a living and serve my God at peace. At this time, I decided to go into the Bible school. And it was like a full Bible school. It was just um, a church Bible program that just helps you get better. It was run by Winner's Chapel. Winner's Chapel is called Wolfby. So I got into Wolfby. And then into what we started hearing teachings that you need to be able to discover purpose before you make a choice in life. Mm. So that led me to a place of prayer. Lord, what would you have me do? Because all I was praying at that time was, Lord, bless my journey to America. Bless my journey <laughs> to America. You know, and so in that prayer session, I had a vision. In that vision, um, the Lord took me, uh, an old man, which I know by interpretation as the Lord, an old man with gray hair, all of that gray beards and all of that, took me to this mountain, very high mountain. And he said to me, look to your right. And I looked, it was endless and it was lush green. Mm. He said, this will I give to you in Lagos. He said, look to your left and look again. He said, this will I give to you in Nigeria. I kept turning around and said, this will I give to you in Africa. And then and he stopped talking. Then I started trying to talk to him. It's America. It's America. And he didn't respond to me. He kept quiet. And I got out of the revelation. When I got out of this revelation, I knew right there and then that America was my dream. But the destiny that God had for me was not there was in America. In it was in Nigeria. So... Uh, that led me to more prayers. So what do you want me to do in Nigeria? That was where the mandate he had for me. From that dream, were you so happy? Um, <laughs> okay, I think... <laughs> I wouldn't say completely happy, right? Because um, I struggled a bit. Um, I struggled. I said, I said, okay, fine. Since I can't go to America, maybe I can go to the UK. <laughs> you know I did all of this, but not work. So, um, so that season of that Bible school program, which was the first level, right. had three levels. Yes. Someone is watching us. Yes. They are going through the same thing you went through. Yeah. God has a purpose for each and every one of us. Wonderful. But yeah. many people do not find their purpose. They mm -hmm. don't even know. They are just going about doing anything. If you are not blessed to 
hear from the Lord that do A, B, C, D. Mm. Many people want to travel when God wants them to live where they are. Ah, like yeah. you. You were not even mm. happy you wanted to go. What are you going to say to that person to encourage him or her? Because they will be watching you by now. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Now, the truth is, so everyone um, who wants a better life for themselves, they want to go to a place they think will offer them what they need. You see, I've come to discover in my personal journey, the blessings of God is not according to your own imagination. It's, it mm. comes as a, re a reward of your obedience. Mm. God is, God's blessings in your life will come as obedience. And you see, mm. each and every one of us ordained by God has been designed for a specific purpose. And mm. that purpose has a location. You can only function in that location that God has ordained you to be. Mm. If God employs you to be in Africa and you go and work in Japan, you'll be a slave in mm. Japan. Yeah. You would only be a master in the place that God has ordained you to be. And so yeah. it, it's why for you to locate the way God wants you to be. And be there. it may not make sense. It may not make sense. And what will help you to understand this obedience is for you to understand first, that blessings are not in nation. Blessings are in people. Blessings are not in places. Blessings are in people. In other words, if you left Africa to America without the blessing of the Lord, you still go to America and suffer because there are people mm. who are homeless even in America. So yeah. it's not about where you are. It's about who you are. So once you discover who you are, then you become confident in the Lord. Even if it tells you to go to a desert, you know you cannot be stranded because you know who you are. I like that. Yes. I like so, that. Uh, first, a discovery of yourself. In fact, uh, in fact, I had to write a book as soon as I had that instruction. I had to write a book, wow. Why Am I Here? In 2012. Why am I, I here? Wrote, Why am I here? Wow. Because, yes. It is first, this is the greatest importance that we need to all have in life. Until you mm. know why you are here, you can't know where you should be. Mm -mm. You Until you know here. why you are here, yes. you will not you know can't... where to be. Yes, you cannot know where you okay. should be. Because mm. it is why you are here that will give mm. direction to where you should be. Mm. And then what you should be doing, wherever you should be. So mm. the discovery of purpose is the beginning of life. In fact, usually I put it this way, that you begin to survive the day you are born, but you begin yeah. to live the day you discover purpose. Yeah. All wow. before that, and you may be a millionaire, but you realize that you are empty because you are not fulfilling yeah. purpose. Yeah. Mm. So um, I knew that from all the trainings I had in that Bible school that I had gone into. So um, I went into God. Now, it's not just about being in Nigeria. You want me to be here, no problem. I know you want me to be in parts of Africa, fine. What will I be here doing? And he said to me, I have raised you up to show my people who they are in Christ. And mm. yes, show my people wow. who they are in who Christ. Who they are in Christ. In Christ. And of course, that became the message that he had given to me. Mm. And I tell you, um, my, my direction, everything changed. Family were not happy with me. People around me were not happy with me because I had an opportunity to go to America. It was a clear opportunity. In fact, I was doing an immigrant visa. It was going to get me into the U.S. Especially with your modeling. You would have with my gone so far. Yeah. You know, with my modeling. But that you was know. not God's purpose. For you. It was not God's plan for my life. Okay. And I realized that my safety was in God's plan for my life. Mm. My greatness mm. is in God's plan for my life. My, my peace is in God's plan for my life. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you may miss God's plan and make money, but you may not have that peace. You may not That's have true. that fulfillment. That's in true. fact, God's plan may not be as big as a big factory but you will have all the fulfillment in life that you can ever need. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And this I found in my own life, 
you know, mm. by following the plan of God. In fact, I also wrote a book to follow that up, and I call it Obedience, the Access Key to Greatness. Obedience. The obedience, the access into greatness. To greatness. You know, I, I said in that book that um, no one can be greater than their level of obedience. So mm. it takes obedience to become great mm. in life. And thank you, Jesus. Are, are you hearing me? Am yes. I still in charge? All right, great. I'm preaching. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, I mean, like, I've always attached books to all of these experiences, you know. Uh, I keep, each time God speaks to me, um, strategically like that, I would always, you know, put up a book by the help of God, you know, to all of this. So, the journey to, into ministry was in shape. It mm. was in shape. After mm. all of this, I knew, I knew what God wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. The question is, how do I start? And in fact, yeah. very important, I need to chip this in. And mm. I went to God in prayer. I said, Lord, um, I've had testimonies. My spiritual father, Bishop Edith, you told him to go to that you, Pastor Ia Debo, you, to lay hands on him mm. for him to feel mm. the spirit of wisdom. That's so true. now, please tell me, who do I go to that will lay mm. hands on me for ministry? Mm. I had something that I didn't, I, I, I wish I didn't hear. He said, I would do it myself. And I'm like, how? Mm. And you told Bishop Oyelepo to go to Pastor Ia Deboye. I mean, several other men of God, you told them what to yeah. go to. Why? Why are you yeah. saying you would, you would do this yourself? How is that going to happen? But um, I have grown up with this level of faith that I don't like to question God. So in order not to seem like I was in doubt of God, I said, well, I'm not going to talk on this topic again. I'm not going to ask you who will lay hand on me again. Mm -hmm. So I'll just leave it at that. And then it came a day in my life where everything in my house became too big. My house became too big for me. Wow. I realized I needed to spend time with God. This house wasn't convenient for this time. And I was living alone. I had to leave my house, I decided to go out for three days camping with God. And then I had gone mm. into, I went to Winner's Chapel, Kenna Land, to be precise, to spend three days with God in the open field. I arrived there the first night, and what was I to do? My prayer point was one, Lord, I want to be your friend. I want to be your friend. Life, I realize, is lonely. I want to be your friend. I realized that Abraham walked with you as a friend. You could communicate secrets to Abraham, even secrets that didn't even concern him, you know. So I, I went into that camp meeting. The very first night I had arrived, all I was doing was just worshiping God. I had no prayer point, actually. I was just worshiping God. And then after worshiping God, I decided to rest about past 12. Fifteen minutes into this, I had a big... This encounter with my God for the rest of my life, I cannot forget. It was like an electric force was connected to me. And this was like, I could feel it like a, a hand on my shoulder. But it was like an electric being plugged into me. I was shaking. And amazingly, I had not slept. I had not slept. So I was hearing the sound of people praying in the camp. But this encounter was happening to me. And this lasted for about, about five minutes. And the hand lifted. And then I got up. I was scared. I, I couldn't lie down. I couldn't. I was afraid. What is this? He said, I have laid hand on you. What? Because usually I would always document my encounters. What is this? He said, I have laid hand on you. I wouldn't pray again. I wouldn't dare pray because mm. it was frightening. It was frightening. I was scared. Yeah. I was scared too much. Listen, I would not pray. I just, in, in fact, I was waiting for day to break for me to get out of that place. That was all I was You were scared. I was scared. And why? You were said to go for three days. Why were you going? Oh, I, I didn't want that to happen again. And, wow. you know, while I was there, and while I was waiting for day to break, I started meditating, God, if this is you that laid hand on me then, 
Okay, no problem. I want to see Bishop Oyele without an appointment. I have no appointment That's to see him. That's what you told God. That's what I told him. He said, he said, go there 10 a.m. Go to the office 10 a.m. Wow. And like like joke, I go in the morning, I got ready. 15 minutes to 10, I was there. I got into the reception. He said, what do you want to see? I said, I want to see Bishop. They looked at me. You have and an appointment. Me. You know they asked me. The no. They looked at me. And amazingly, they didn't even ask much questions. They said, sit down wow. there. My God. I sat down. Mm. And at about just a few moments past 10, Bishop walked in. And they had told me what to do as soon as he walks in. Mm. And I should just kneel down, go to him and kneel down and say whatever I have to say. Mm. Mm. He walked in, I knelt down. He asked me what I wanted. I told him the computers and stuff. He laid hand on me, he said, Go and have fulfillment. My dear. <laughs> that was when I I believed the things that had God happened. Is, yeah. To me. God is faithful. You know. Um, God is faithful. I mean, and that, that ushered you into ministry. That ushered me into ministry. Now, um, after that encounter, ministry didn't begin immediately. So I, I, I started praying and fasting and you know seeking the face of God. I decided to try the mantle he had given to me. Lord, we have to put this to work. And mm. so I wrote to, to the Lagos State Teaching Hospital where you will have you know what I call condemned cases. People who mm. really sick, really, you know. Wow. Um, in a private so yes. In a private hospital you have people who are sick, but not really, really, you know, that kind of cases mm. that I wanted. So I wrote to them, and then I think a week or so later, they approved my letter to come pray for sick people. They gave me the time. So I went with that approval to the hospitals. Oh. And um, I started going from bedside to bedside. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I arrived at the hospital to pray for the sick, I said, Lord, touch them. He said, no, you touch them. I've laid hand on you. You touch them, not me. Mm. And so I lay hand mm. on them. In that case, there was a particular boy who was booked for surgery. He had a very big head. The head had become very big, they said, and there was fluid in the head. Physically. And so that, yeah, physically. That mm. enlarged the head. Mm. And so I laid my hand on the head and I prayed. I said the surgery was canceled. The boy was healed. You know, there was no sign physically. I just prayed by faith because of what God had said to me. Mm. And so... I walked away. Meanwhile, this boy was booked for surgery, I think two days after. The mother had bought everything for the surgery. However, the very next day, she realized that the boy had started changing. But changes had mm. occurred in the, in the boy. So when the doctors came to roll the boy into the hospital, she told them that a man of God came here and had prayed for my boy. And changes have started occurring. And I've seen some changes. You know, you know, medical science, they didn't believe. They didn't pay attention to her. They said, Madam, if you lose this opportunity, you know how long we've waited for this surgery. If you lose this opportunity, you're not going to get it anytime soon again. So she allowed them. They rode the boy into the hospital, into the theater, and then they set up their procedures. Of course, they opened up the boy, only to find out that there was no fluid in his head, and the fluid had dried up. So Hallelujah. as you were hearing God and obeying, mm -hmm. He was doing yeah. his work. He was with doing so his work. You know that yeah. our journey with God needs obedience, like you said. Someone is watching us. They are struggling with obedience, yet they want to follow God. What are mm -hmm. you going to tell them? Well, um, I've always said this, that when you pray, the answer to your prayer is not a miracle. Mm. When you pray, the answer to your prayer is not a breakthrough. The answer to your prayer is an instruction. God yeah, answers us by instructions. God the promotes answer us to your prayer is by instruction. Instruction, yes. Mm. So God answers us and gives us instruction. Mm. And then what we do with that instruction determines what we will see. When God mm. promised to bless you, he will release that blessing in an instruction. And most yeah. times, the instruction would not make sense. And so if you yeah. ever want to feel the mind of God concerning you, you ever want to be oh. great, 
will ever want to experience the signs and wonders that God wants to do through your life, you have mm. to obey God. That's the only mm. way. The Bible, in fact, the Bible says that whosoever that comes to God must believe first that He is. Believe that and He that, is. That then that He's the rewarder of those who diligently and seek diligently. Him. So the word seek diligent him. means is work hard. So you have to work yeah. it out. You have to mm. obey Him. You have to do mm. something. You see, each time I teach in church, which is one of my major gigs, is teaching. Each time I teach, I always tell Christians, never think that God will bless you for doing nothing. No. Mm. It is your work. Yes. Mm. It is your work of obedience that God rewards. Mm. Pray all you want. If you don't obey God, you can see his miracles in your life. Mm. So, everyone, especially in our generation, we want God to work in your life. You want results in your life. You want miracles in your life. Obey God. Anyone that is on top of you, anyone that is doing good today, they are doing good as a reward for their work of obedience. God can never lift you if you are not willing to work in obedience. And that's what I found at early. Rev, that's so profound. Yes. And for these few minutes that we've spent with you has been so fruitful. I have literally yeah. typed a lot of things you were saying. Your walk with God cannot be fruitful if you yes. don't obey Him. Obey Him, yes. So as we walk day in and day out with, with the Lord, all we need is obedience to oh, His yeah. Word. Yeah. Thank you so much, Rev. It's been a pleasure mm. talking to you and you sharing your life journey with us. Before you yeah. go, mm. will you say one thing that will strengthen someone's spirit? Mm. Thank you, dear. And then you lead someone also to Christ. Mm. Thank you, dear. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I really want to appreciate mm. you for us having, having mm. been on your program today. The Lord mm. bless you. Amen. Now, Amen. for everyone on this live stream, um, mm -hmm. One thing I want to tell you this this day is the fact that God never fails. No. God never fails. Faith no. in God is the secret to everything you want in this life. Mm. It's not God. And no matter what it is, if you trust God, He will do it for you. He will come true for you. My journey mm. is a huge testament that yeah. God blesses that God will words. But of Lord. course, it is a work of obedience. As you journey yeah. with God, obey Him. And all you need to do, find out what He wants you to do at times. Yeah. Do it and, and wait for Him. Just yeah. that is as simple as that. Find out what He wants you to do. Lord, what yeah. would you have me do? In this situation, yeah. I am homeless. Yeah. Lord, what do I do about this homelessness? Listen to whatever He tells you to do. Whatever He tells you to do, Please do it. And after you have done it, praise Him. Wait for Him. He will come. He will never fail you. I am Amen. a testament of what I'm saying. Amen. I lost my dad very early. I was six years old when I lost my dad. I was 17 mm. when I lost and buried my mom. And I knelt mm. down. I said, God, make me and let no man take the glory for my making. Mm. I tell you till date, it has been the help of God. In Amen. ministry, we've never... I've never written a peer form. I've never depended on any individual. Mm. Yet God is doing miracles for us. I mean, just this mm. year, we're moving to the second property that we're owning as a church. Wow. Yet there's, we don't levy people in our church. All of Amen. this is just by following God. I'm telling it's you today, no matter where you are in your life, please obey God and he will That's prosper true. you. In the name Amen. Of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank and you for, so much. Yes, and for those today that are yet to know the Lord, if you just heard That's my it. story, mm. I lost my parents pretty early. I buried my mom at 17. I told God, make me. I choose to follow God. How did I start working with God? My mom, if I asked her a thing while I was quite younger, she would say, Let, let's pray to God. So I realized that she would need to pray to God to get what I wanted. So I realized you are you are just an intermediary. I don't need an agent to relate with God. That was how my journey started. And I can tell you that till date, God has taken care of me. 
Amen. If you will let Jesus come to your heart today, he will take care mm. of you. He will Amen. clean you up. He will wash you. He will strengthen Amen. you. He will help you. Like I'm doing Amen. in church in this season, it's our season of help. He will help you. There is no way in your life that God will not help you. But first, he must be your Lord. He must be at the center of your life. I don't know what you're dealing with. It may be alcohol, it may be addiction, it may be pornography, it may be one thing or the other. Let God help you. You know the truth, you cannot change yourself. You struggle when you attempt to change yourself. But let Jesus do the work of changing. And today, if you really want God to help you, I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I am tired of all the pains. I am tired of this way of life. I am tired of this from pillar to post. Jesus, I want a relief from the problems of life. I believe you died for me on the cross of Calvary. I've heard all of the stories of your death. I've heard the sacrifice. Now, Lord, I want to accept the price that you paid for me on the cross of Calvary. Mm. Rescue me come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. I surrender my life to you today. Come and take charge. Come and transform my life. Use me for your glory. I come to you and I give you my life just the way I am. Use me and write a new story about my life. Be my Lord and I'm about to save you from today in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for forgiving me. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Congratulations. Your journey has just started. Congratulations. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Rev, thank God you bless. so, so much for spending you. time with us. God richly bless you and Amen. your ministry. Amen. Viewers, you heard the testimony of our dear pastor. It's been a long journey, but God has been faithful. Give your all to him, and he will never fail you. He said something that I like. He says, the answer to your prayer is by instructions. If you have prayed to God and you want an answer and you hear an instruction, you follow and then God will bless you. I hope you have been blessed by this episode. Please share this video to bless friends, families, and loved ones. What do you have to share? Please take our numbers on the screen. Call us. I'll give you the opportunity to do so live on set. Give your all to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and he will never fail you. That will be all for this episode. See you same time next week. Bye-bye.